Hi listener, this is From My Geology to Unity, a spiritual journey where we let go of ego and ideological doctrine in favor of meaning, purpose, and unity as a whole. Today I'm interviewing Arya Young, a divine channel, creative writer, instructor of yoga and meditation, YouTuber, and more. She's a deeply loving soul with a good relationship with Mother Gaia. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. I am truly honored super excited <laughs> well thanks I mean, your youtube channel is bigger than my podcast currently but, but thanks <laughs> it's all getting there it's all getting there this is amazing yeah. i'm so excited to be here so i'm gonna sort of no i what do you like about my podcast? I know it's a bit, that's not how a normal way to start it, but. <laughs> I really liked, from what I listened to, I listened to a couple when you first um, emailed me like a month or two back. I listened to a couple and I really liked how the conversations were going, how it was more so a conversation instead of just like a straightforward interview. So that's why I'm super excited because I know we can get into whatever and just kind of see where the conversation goes. I just, it's it's awesome. I love it. And it's, it's completely open and it just takes you wherever the conversation goes. So yeah, yeah I really like that about it. So I'm excited to be sharing it with everyone. <laughs> All right. So how did you get into, well, what you do? So originally I like looking back I never ever thought that I would be in this place that I am in where I am actually teaching and sharing about my own personal spiritual experience so originally when I was younger I thought I would get into like musical theater which is almost the complete opposite of that it's very like showy it's very egotistical it's very fun um but there was like a moment after I decided okay this is not what I want to do. Like This was something that my sister wanted to do. So I switched <laughs> and I didn't know what I was switching to, but I found myself just kind of awakening to the little synchronicities of my life, um, seeing how just overnight, I always said I couldn't write. I can't write. I could never write. I barely liked reading. And overnight, I told my sister, who's like a year older than me, we were really close, but I told her, no, I can't write a story. She was like, you should write a story for this contest. And I'm like, no, no, I can't. I can't write a story. What are you talking about? Had a dream about it, a really good story that would go with it. Wrote it out that morning and then showed it to her. And I was just amazed because everyone was like, whoa, this is amazing. This is beautiful. And I was like, hey, I can do something I thought I couldn't do. So then that made me start to think of, oh, okay, I can actually switch things some things up in my own reality I can switch up the way I'm thinking I can switch up the what I'm doing so that it feels more natural like there are things I can do that feel easy without me having to go and learn so so much about it so I feel like getting into <laughs> this place where I was just trying a lot of new things I did dance um, and eventually I started doing a lot more meditation on top of my yoga. Yoga was the first thing for me. I want to say yoga was like the base of my awakening because I became a yoga teacher first. And that's how my YouTube channel started. I was like, oh, I'm just going to share you yoga videos. <laughs> so I started with that. And then from there, meditation kind of took me to that direction. And it's, it's so strange because it's only been in the past two or three years that I've actually started sharing it and feeling, you know, just open enough and just confident enough to be like, okay, I don't care what everyone else thinks. <laughs> this is what I'm into. And it was even just recently that I got into light language. So it's literally been a synchronicity after another, just me following another um, sign, just following another passion of mine. That's, it's pretty much been just that. <laughs> so me just working on myself has taken me through so many different paths of yoga, kundalini, um, energy work, just shadow work and just following the people that I have followed and listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, like all of that was what really helped me to become where I am today, where 
I decided, okay, I see all of these people that I love doing this, like sharing on YouTube. And then I decided, all right, <laughs> I can do that with my yoga. And then it just progressed from there. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. <laughs> There's so much more like in detail yeah. that I could get into, but I mean, that's just, it was, it was totally just an experience. Sounds so. like you decided to do what you love and mm -hmm. from there everything else just blossomed yeah yeah just new doors open up like every single time I kind of follow my intuition it's like oh there's a door there's a window <laughs> there's something yeah. I can look into you know I've only just started picking up on intuitions and following that and uh yeah so I feel like I can do something similar like it's it's fascinating I just I came to podcasting just from certain synchronicities that just started coming up and mm. you just need to be ready for it I suppose and then suddenly it changes your yeah. life yeah it just gets easier and easier every single time you kind of follow the little things so it it opens up new pathways and it, it's also just like the healing journey I think too like mm. when we're actually healing we're really just coming back to who we are and what's true to us coming back to like our inner child and all of that and that just awakens so much more that just opens our eyes or even just like our reality and our perception to so much to where it's like oh yeah i actually can <laughs> like i can do this yeah. i can look into this i'm i'm enough you know it's oh, such a journey such a beautiful journey so where did your creative writing take you so what have you been doing that with that yeah so at first when i just started my yoga teacher training maybe a couple years ago, now that it's 2021, yeah, two or three years ago, I did that. And that was a really nice period because I didn't have much going on. Um, and I would just write stories. I wrote fiction novels. So a lot of the creative writing is just fiction. So here's the thing. <laughs> I have a bunch of half written books and I have one full book that I haven't done anything with. I've had some poetry published like in magazines and random states <laughs> and counties. But other than that, um, I'm feeling like just being able to kind of open up to all of this new stuff. I feel like I've just piled on like light language, mm. um, doing healing sessions with people, YouTube and courses. So all of that came and I see that, okay, this is going to be the thing that sets me up so that I have the funds <laughs> to be able to take time off and finish these books because there is a book that, um, the earth is just wanting me to create. Like I can oh. feel Mama Gaia. Like I have this entire story um, that's really, really kind of, and this is like still fresh <laughs> for me, but really just all about awakening to her consciousness and like revitalizing her, but more to the extreme because it's fiction. You know, that's something yeah. that we're doing right now is like finding that balance with her, remembering that we need to connect with her. Do you talk to um, her returning then? back to that. Yeah, actually, I I wish I had this book. Um, I actually, actually tried it myself. Yeah. And um, yeah, it can be emotional or something because it, it feels like talking to a mother, really. Yes, yes yes it's so beautiful yeah have you heard of this book um the great mother bible by mayor cromwell i think it is i have now yes definitely look into that i feel like that deep in the connection because after getting so busy with my business i was kind of neglecting like that writer side of me because that was just my original way of expressing and i started doing a lot more speaking and just you know all of that stuff <laughs> but I got back to that book and then it just took me back into that place where it's like oh that was like my younger self it wants to write and I was able to hear her even clearer because in that book she basically um the author is speaking with mother earth and the great mother which is like the feminine aspect of source consciousness it's an spirit. archetype as well yeah definitely for sure and it's it's beautiful it's so beautiful to like listen to all of her little teachings and just all of her little insights um especially in back and forth conversation with the author it's really cool but it's helped me be able to realize that that voice that i've been 
kind of hearing it's not even like I I don't like saying like hearing a voice but it's more like it feels like that intuitive like thought kind of like a mother in your head right so I could understand that so much of my past and like looking back and saying oh she's been there like Gaia has been there <laughs> through my experiences and like guiding me it's amazing to see I don't know if I've had that but that's mm -hmm. that's fascinating that that's uh I'm starting to get a, a more working relationship more than a spirit guides though which is cool yes oh it's amazing yeah I've only I feel like working with my spirit guides has been amazing as well it's always for me I wonder if it's the same for you or if it's different I know everyone's very very different but I'll work with like one at a time and then if I do any like healing work, I'll just like call all of them here. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know every single one, but I know there's like specific um, that help me with specific things. I wonder if you notice that. I haven't, I'm quite new to it. So I kind of, so far I've done it all at once. Um, yeah. But I've done there's certain meditations where you can talk to a spirit guide and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... It's definitely interesting when you start to, it's almost, I feel like this whole journey, just being able to speak and realize, oh, it's not just in my head or, oh, it's just yeah. not me. I'm not crazy. <laughs> and like trusting yourself to be like, okay, I have this connection. You know, about that, like I've been talking to my brother and he doesn't believe in this at all, but he, he feels that I'm definitely doing a lot better. And like, if you're more balanced psychologically, if you're feeling like, you know, you're getting the the benefits of the inner work you've been doing. I mean, wouldn't that indicate that you're not crazy? In fact, you're more sane than beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Because we do, we do feel better. We have like this more, this liveliness, you know? this kind of sense of purpose, I guess, in a, in a sense. Yeah, because like really when you don't have that, like what are you living for? Like it's someone else's purpose, right? Yeah, that's so true. And that's like I, what I feel like society does in a lot of different cultures is like we are brought up to serve other people's dreams and their purposes. And, and then we just start like, what is the meaning of everything? <laughs> But we just, oh, it's just crazy. I've been talking a lot about like what we are actually not taught and we're not taught so many things. We're not taught to actually listen to ourselves. We're not taught to like look deeper and really get to know ourselves and get to know how we react to people and our emotions. And like, we're not taught any of that. We're just taught to bypass everything. It's crazy, crazy. It happens in the spiritual community too. It does. It definitely does. There's definitely like the spiritual ego comes a lot, comes out a lot. A lot of people like to bypass spiritual work and healing by escaping through like star seeds and, you know, <laughs> wanting oh, to go yeah. to more like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, actually, could you explore that a bit more? I want to hear your thoughts on it. The yeah. So, so the spiritual ego is, very interesting because I feel like once we are on this path and we realize, wow, this is really important. This is really great. Like I am one of these light workers or these star seeds and I have a mission and all this stuff. And we begin to bypass things when we start thinking that we're entitled to certain things or that we're better than other people. And I feel like that's where the spiritual ego comes in, where we start to see other people and their issues <laughs> because we have that awareness and we we don't we see it more as a separation so I feel like the spiritual ego is really good at separating ourselves from others in that sense instead of giving this love and compassion to other people we're mm. separating them and being like oh, oh this is different I don't you think know? it's just spirituality in the overt sense I, I just uh -huh. I just realization that when you get a little bit more awareness <clears throat> Before you've done that inner work, you might, well, the ego comes in and it's possible to get a sort of 
awareness arrogance we are like yeah. i i see what more of what's going on i'm better than them and if you're not in a good place you might start being well i'm just better than them right and it's not just spiritually like if you've got that bit more awareness maybe and it might go in and be involved in politics like if you have enough awareness to realize that there's something deeply wrong with our society and you've maybe you've got a, a theory that you've come across that you feel like explains it like it could be anything it could be socialism it could be vegetarianism it could be well it could be anything left right or whatever right like and if you are like if that's your ideology in a way there's a sort of higher awareness to that compared mm -hmm. to like just going with regular political parties mm. so maybe it's like a, a step along that journey to getting to spirituality does that resonate yeah that makes sense because it's the awareness that comes first too hmm. that's like the biggest thing is that we become aware and we're seeing so much and then it's like you get to make a choice after that you know and hopefully yeah. that yeah and you might make the wrong choice at first and you need to like reevaluate Mm -hmm. that's happened with me yeah yeah that's uh, same like <laughs> i've by bypassed so much <laughs> without realizing it um and just working with the ego has been it has been a journey <laughs> because the ego is also just like a hurt version of our inner child as well just like for me it was a lot about being seen and heard because i was more the shy one when i was younger you know and that was like my inner child wanted that. It wanted to play and be open enough to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it instead of being mm. an adult. And then my ego was like, oh, well, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get attention <laughs> everywhere we can. We're naturally so, more like children, right? Like in okay. between lives, especially like what if, that's an interesting idea that if the inner child matures, but without losing the the innocence and th that playfulness then maybe that's what that's like the equivalent of the ego in 4d like or 5d mm -hmm. maybe because yeah. i wonder yeah. what what replaces i mean maybe we'll just have ego but like working in a healthy way or maybe not. Mm -hmm. I've started reading um, A Course in Miracles, and oh, it deals a yes. lot with reducing the ego and how the ego is kind of an illusion. And I'm, I'm not sure about everything in it, that, but certainly I, I get the impression that there's something else that starts to shine through when you reduce the lies you tell yourself. Mm hmm yeah i have actually not read a course in miracles but it was really funny because a lot of what i'll talk about kind of aligns with it <laughs> so i thought that was really funny but um yeah i feel like and this is the thing i even had this thought the other day was that okay well where how does our ego just become how where does it come from and even just like talking about this now it's it's interesting seeing that connection with that inner child and the ego it's like, maybe that's it acting out. And because our inner child really does act out. And if we don't actually speak with it and heal these certain parts within our, our childhood and our past and hold on to that curiosity and that, you know, imagination and that innocence, that purity that we can live this adult life with, it's like finding that union with your inner child and saying that, okay, we can initiate into this adult and still hold on to who we are at our core. And that's what's cool about spirituality because we're just coming back to our core, <laughs> yeah. which is really like what we were born with is the, just this openness to be like, there are endless possibilities. It doesn't have to be so serious. Yeah. We can be kind and compassionate. It's, but yeah, it's so interesting thinking about the ego that way. Cause I always think like, where does this come from like do we have this as a child like this ego but at the same time i just can't imagine it i feel like partly it's conditioning 
maybe a bit of trauma, but also maybe the nature of the 3D matrix. Mm. There was, I've heard some, that there were, at the time with the, there was this like, civil, human civilization had like a fall from grace. I think it was the Atlanteans. Um, and there ended up being this, the, something like the, there's like this energy grid on earth and it ended up being corrupted somehow. And I don't know the details, but maybe yeah. that affects us. Probably. I mean, a lot of us have probably lived back in like Lemuria and Atlantis and everything like that. And I don't know. I also don't really know the specifics <laughs> of how they fell, but a lot of people do believe that the time we are in now is actually um, growing on from where they basically fell. So a lot of people are actually yeah. dealing with that trauma of being so close to this kind of like, you know, quote unquote, new earth, <laughs> right? This age of Aquarius or this golden age and just stopping. So a lot of us are dealing with that trauma of what happened in the past, these ancient civilizations, which I'm so excited to kind of learn more about, but there's definitely a connection there where we are actually moving forward from that place and seeing what happens. So a lot of people will also say like, we're living in a time that hasn't really occurred yet. Like this, all of these energies yeah. here, you know, it's very interesting. So what's your experience with past lives? Past lives. I have, I have, I actually been really wanted to, want you to do past life regression. That's something that like I'm moving into a little bit more, but as far as my past lives, any work that I've ever done with them um, has always been like on my own in my room, you know, <laughs> meditating. And then somehow I have this memory of, you know, something that happened, but a lot of the time, most of my experience, like working with past life has always been like, um, really just pain and anxiety and just different emotions within my body. A lot of that, like a lot of my past life stuff has been attached to my body. I had this really interesting um, experience with a chiropractor who was also a holistic doctor. And I was having a lot of pain in like my uh, left ovary, like my, my gut area and around there. And he took me through this meditation where I was actually going back in a pa past timeline and he would use like muscle testing. I don't know if you've heard of that, but basically you can use muscle testing to ask your body like yes or no, or what's going on. Okay. And yeah. And you I talk tested to the muscle, like it's a person and yeah, he would basically, you'd like hold your arm out. Other people do this like many different ways, um, but you'd hold your arm out and then it would, it would be the strength of your body answering the questions that decided like whether it was like a past life or not. And I guess I tested that there was some past life um, trauma there within my, my lower region. And it was interesting because I went through an experience. It was almost like doing inner child work where I kind of went back in time as an angel for this little girl that had um, died in a car crash. Like she was in a car seat and, and that was like where the pain I was feeling was over there and um, my ovary and my lower belly. So very, very interesting, but I went through just being an angel for them, just kind of like we do in the inner child and talking to them and letting them know it's like, it's okay. So that was a really powerful experience. And after that, I hadn't had any pain. And to this day, I still don't have any pain in that region because I was able to go back and heal that. So it's, it's so, it's really powerful to do past life work. I feel like it's, for me, that's just been my experience. It's always been attached to my body. Like it's always been these ailments or my headaches and like where these come from. Cause sometimes we just don't know where these emotions or this pain is coming from. And sometimes we're just clearing, we're clearing some past soul, um, you know, past timelines, what our soul has been through. Well, so interesting. It's a good thing we've got so much alternative medicine because it means that's an avenue for people to discover new things like this yes. yes definitely and there's just so much more to explore <laughs> i saw so you've exciting. been doing yin yoga recently 
Yes, I love yin yoga. Yin yoga is very much a personal practice. Um, I didn't realize how cool it was or how spiritual it was until I started seeing a lot of other people do it. But it's really wonderful for actually releasing um, old beliefs and emotions. Because you're holding poses for so long, your body begins to react to the resistance, right? It begins to resist actually letting go, actually going deeper into the poses, which is really interesting. And within sp specific poses, whether and wherever it's targeting in the body, it's actually opening us up and healing um, some ailments, but also emotions and stored you know, stored trauma within the body. So it can be really powerful, <laughs> um, yin yoga. And at first it's, it's a very, when you start it and you haven't done it before, it's really uncomfortable because it's that resistance and that's where we're supposed to be. It's kind of like Kundalini in that way where we're holding our arms up for like several minutes and it's really uncomfortable, but we have, but we have to push through. Is yin yoga feminine? is just a more, yin, I would say, is a lot more feminine because it's it's about being well actually i guess the stillness is more masculine but at the same time you know i can't remember which is which the yin or yang so yin is more feminine the yang is more masculine but at the same right. time a lot of people do say a masculine aspect is like meditating and being still and that's basically what we're doing in yin yoga which is really interesting but i think maybe yeah. because we're not activating fire within us um in the yin it's very restorative and we're kind of more in a restful state or trying to be <laughs> but at first it right. does not feel that way <laughs> yeah so tell me more about kundalini yoga kundalini I absolutely love Kundalini. So Kundalini is all about, you know, raising the energy up through the spine. Um, it's really about activating the uh, cerebral spinal fluid, actually, which is basically the waters and everything along our spine that actually Joe Dispenza does that. Oh, yeah. Yes. I think he does. Yes. Probably. Oh, okay. No, carry on, carry on. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's that it's that spinal fluid that we are actually allowing to go up and down the spine because a lot of the time, if we're sitting all day and working all day, a lot of that fluid isn't going everywhere and we're not actually giving all the oxygen and all of the energy where it needs to go throughout the body. So it's basically just activating all of our energy centers, <laughs> allowing ourselves to be free flowing, allowing the blood to flow, the oxygen to go where it needs to go. And because we're in this, you know, really dense place where the energy just goes down, right? This is just an, an, a practice to raise it up. And this is something that I, when I first started doing Kundalini, I did a 40 day Kriya. These are the best the absolute best because every single day you just journal a little bit on how the practice went it could be horrible one day and then the next day it feels absolutely amazing but i highly suggest like if anyone wants to do kundalini try a kriya just pick one that you like even if it's tough and you're gonna see so much strength in your body and you're gonna see such a shift in how you are just moving past resistance it's huge huge shifts and like you can do 40 to some people do 120 days they just do it every single morning um for like an hour half hour but that's like what i started with and then from there i was like now i know if i ever want to you know break through anything or just strengthen my body i can just do a 40-day kriya real quick <laughs> i heard that you need to be ready for it you do you do i know that they suggest like not eating before you do it i know you, they suggest like looking at the contradictions because for some people especially if you have a more misaligned spine it could like you know shoot energy in different directions and it may not feel as good at first it really depends on the practice that you're doing because some practices are way more intense than others but I would suggest like starting out doing a beginner's practice because Kundalini to really bring that energy up a lot of the time we got to hold our breath and it's like it's being really gentle with yourself and noticing oh this doesn't feel good today I'm not going to do it today um, which is just I feel like a general rule in yoga anyway but I'm sure there's like a lot more 
that you could dive into to make sure, okay, am I ready? <laughs> and just knowing, I feel like just knowing that you are going to resist it, you know, is going to be a good thing. You are going to resist and it's going to feel like it sucks and it's hard, but it's like push through, but not to the point where you are actually hurting yourself. You know, like if your body says like, oh, I can, I can go a lot further because our mind will normally tell us we can't go further, but our body can. And that's normally that connection there where we can be like, no, I can trust my body to keep going further that, you know, to an extent. Um, it's really like, you got to know yourself, <laughs> you got to know right. your limits and um, your pain points and kind of what you're dealing with. I know if you have like high blood pressure and, you know, stuff like that, you should probably look into different practices or just even something that um, even just a Kundalini practice where you're not holding your breath too much or doing a lot of quick breaths that feel like hyperventilation, but it's not. The practices are very, very well put together. Okay. Super fun. Well, that's, uh, that sounds helpful. So it sounds like though, to know yourself isn't, that's actually not as easy as it sounds, is it? No, <laughs> no, it's not. I feel like for me getting to know myself and like getting to know your energy and everything like that. And this is something that I am actually putting a course together all about like knowing your energy, <laughs> which I mean, your energy involves your spiritual body, right? Your aura, your energetic body involves your mental body, your emotional body and your physical body. Um, so I feel like really tapping into first your physical body and getting comfortable with that and kind of moving outward from there kind of gives you a general kind of easier way to actually know your energy and know your intuition. So starting out with like, okay, how does my body actually feel like actually connect and be in your body? What does it feel like? What feels right? What doesn't? So, you know, you can have those boundaries with people as well. And then from there, you can kind of move into the mind. Because I feel like for me, it was an easy transition because I was a dancer and I was a cheer coach and all this kind of stuff. So I was in my body and then it was like my mind was the next step <laughs> to kind of work through and then my emotions. And then eventually I was able to expand my awareness, I feel like, after you kind of feel good within yourself, which is going to take time. You know, it's like there's always some new shadows and some new aspects of ourselves that want to come up. Yeah, for me, it's the mental work that's that's more the emphasis because, well, I have a medical condition that means that um, affects my physical health anyway. So I don't know. I mean, it depends on each person, right? Because some people might focus on the physical first then branch out other people might focus on getting their head right or maybe you could be half and half I suppose mm -hmm. yeah it depends on where you're at I feel like it's like taking responsibility and allowing yourself to be where you're at and if it, if whatever is calling to you first like for me it was my mental body as well just like were, I mean, even to this day, <laughs> that was like a big part of my journey. Most of it was just all mental. It was all reframing my thoughts, not bringing up the anxiety, not creating stories and going back in the past and oh, starting yeah, yeah. things. You know what I mean? Oh, exactly so that right. was, yeah. <laughs> we need to process so much of these. We've learned these different ways, these stories we tell ourselves or these coping mechanisms that have grown past and this complicated mm -hmm. mess of ego and shadow and blair right yeah yeah it's definitely a mess <laughs> it's definitely a mess at first and it's like decoding we're literally decoding and taking thought by thought and belief by belief and it takes it it it's hard work but the cool thing is that if you are honoring yourself and if you actually do the work to be like, okay, every single day, let me repeat these affirmations. Let me actually realize what's actually going on in my head. Let me not just ignore that thought or ignore that emotion completely. Like, let's switch it. 
you know and that was a big thing for me actually and that's what made me like very quiet too because I was working so much with like all everything that was going on in my head because it was so overwhelming but um yeah overall it's just really coming back to okay this is where I'm at is your mental body the thing that is coming up all the time and that's where you need to work on is it are you do you realize you're not even in your physical body how can we do that and that's going to help you kind of work with the mental or your emotions the things that are like taking you over and just thrashing you around you know or do you Mm. feel like it's something further than that so you're right. It's like, it's definitely where are you at? <laughs> How are you feeling? What's present with you? Because whatever's present with you is going to be your guide to be like, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to work on. This is what's present in my life. This is what's most important to me. And then the rest are going to kind of fall into place um, in their own time. Yeah. How do the different bodies like work together? Hmm. I like to see it all encompassing as our energy because we're souls as humans. Um, I'm trying to remember (laughs) there's this meme actually I saw that was like human and it was basically like um, I forgot what the hue meant but it's basically our soul manifested into physical form. So I like to see it all as just everything is energy and it's only our minds and our eyes that create this physical reality, right? The soul creates everything, right? Yeah. Because the soul is God, right? Yep, which is God, which is us. It's the holographic theory. (laughs) Mm. And it's like there's this intricate system set up, I suppose. I mean, and we all the souls are agreeing on continuing it. And that's why it exists, maybe. Yes, that's so true. Because we all we all agree to come here, and well, forget it's like a democracy. Maybe of a, I don't know. Maybe it's not democracy because it's like depends on your frequency, right? Yeah, it really does. It really yeah. does. And that's the whole thing. It's like how do we? It's it's so interesting looking at kind of the creation of all of this and being like, okay, yeah, we did agree to be here. We have specific contracts. We've been here so many different times. And we actually said, okay, yes, it's totally cool for me to forget my galactic past or, you know, your earthly past um, to be here to do this work. Like we are all here to do it. And a lot of people will say, I know this is kind of getting off topic, but <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people will say um, that we do have more... Mm, I guess extraterrestrials with their own agenda that are here to, and I've already done this, you know, this is, this has already been so, but they were here to really work more on this like selfish timeline where we are raising up more of that greed, kind of like how our world has been. So some people believe that there have been these forces that been have been influencing humans themselves well, to be less themselves. Star like seeds less have love. always been a thing, right? Yes. There's yeah. more of that going on now, but it's it's almost like it's almost like a cold war <laughs> of like <laughs> yes. So like some aliens are they they send star seeds here to influence things more to the light, some more to the dark. Um Mm -hmm. so it's a really interesting way of looking at it and of course on earth you know we third density is our choice where we choose our polarity so Mm. it's all about deciding what way earth is going to go although from what i hear it's pretty much already decided like you know it's going to the light it's just like it, it it has to all play out Mm, it might be a yeah. bit optimistic, but it resonates with me. So I resonate with that too. <laughs> I think because it's it it's almost like this this war between you know the positive and the negative almost like you could see it that way. But like you said, it's like we already the light already won. You know, it's it's already won. We're just watching all of these shadows, all of these parts of our planet. Mm of our humanity just come up that are just not in this vibration of love like this doesn't align with it let's bring it up let's heal it it's just like we need to do that to to heal it because if you don't know about it 
it's if it's not in your conscious awareness how can you heal it mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's so it's interesting just, you know it's just like shadow work but globally global shadow work that's what's going yeah. on <laughs> and it's amazing to see that's that's how we can actually like when we're that aware which is what we really hope a lot of other people to see is like all of this that's happening that you could see as bad is actually really great. <laughs> like, this is a wonderful yeah. thing. I'm so glad that this is coming up. You know, I'm so glad that they're talking about this. Um, that this is of, happening. I kind of made that, I realized certain things globally before I realized them personally. I, I know it <laughs> seems a bit odd, but it's sometimes that being consistent is actually harder than it sounds because you might not know that you've got certain emotions pent up that you so you might not know all these things it takes time with shadow work isn't it it's difficult uh yeah to deal with yeah what was the most difficult issue you had if you were willing to talk about it Mm, that's a good question (laughs) let me just search back a little bit um i want to say it's actually something i'm still dealing with today is my and I even said this before but my feelings of uh this like insecurity that what I do isn't enough and that's oh, like yeah. the biggest thing for me is like what I do good enough. yeah that I'm not good enough that if whatever relationship even in my business like I need to continue doing more and this is part of my human design too like I'm a manifesting generator and we're like always go, 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 go. I feel like I always have to be kind of in this masculine state where I'm working, working, working all the time or that I'm doing so much for other people. And it's, it's, I'm still like working through some of, some of that to this day. Like that has been the biggest thing. Well, I do (laughs) think you you pull off being feminine well enough. I, I didn't, I wouldn't have thought that you had this masculine drive but (laughs) yeah it's really from my past of working like my parents uh own their own business and I was taken on as one of the managers and I still kind of work it but obviously with the pandemic we haven't had any work which has allowed me to actually bring this up and see it within my own spiritual journey seeing that I was starting to bypass things because I wanted so bad to advance and to be the best that I could be so I was I wasn't being present and And you're attached to it oh yeah you're attached (laughs) to your service oh yeah yeah you're saying yeah that's an issue I had Mm -hmm. yes oh my gosh I love that attached to my service I haven't even thought of it that way but yes (laughs) I want to be the best service for the person ever (laughs) like and it is like it's, it's ego Mm-hmm. total it's total ego and right now like where I'm at uh, well anyway just um pulling back a little bit I was I was working this job where it was very ego driven right I was managing so many different people I would do comic cons and manage uh, whole activations that we would do outside so it was a big deal and I would travel across the country um, and do all of these different things for people and connect with people in the UK and he, I would be basically that person that made everything work <laughs> and was like the background person and I loved it because it made me feel like it drew, drove my ego it was like yeah I'm in charge I'm confident I could do this it was easy for my logical brain but then working oh. through my own business like that immediate immediately came up I found myself procrastinating not doing things not finishing things because I felt like the logical brain felt like it needed a task to do it wasn't listening to the guidance and the creative aspect of my feminine so that's been bringing up the feminine has been so healing and the earth has been helping me so much like mother Gaia helping me so much <laughs> to like allowing myself to actually bring up that feminine and now that I feel a lot more balanced within my business I'm like doing the same thing with all my relationships so it's it's like okay I don't have to try so hard you don't have to try so hard to do so many different things the right. love is there the truth is there you know how do you balance like so how do you do your creative side and like your podcast 
on you know youtube channel like Mm -hmm. how do you get a balance there because i've been dealing with this myself actually like i mean it is creative in a way the way i do podcasting but you know i i've always had this i actually like creative writing i haven't done it in a long time but actually, i've done it fairly recently and i also like world building you know, like fantasy maps and stuff i but love that <laughs> yeah I, I, I like thinking of these stories and stuff it's just like but at the same time i've been doing so well so much better with this podcasting that like how do you find that balance Mm -hmm. so it's taken some time I've actually been in intensives and courses and programs and (laughs) mentoring just for this one thing but the biggest thing was realizing that I needed to find this balance I needed to be able to create a structure so create a schedule for myself and um allow myself to be more intuitive with the schedule. So I make my schedule like once a week, I'll be like, this is all the stuff I want to do every single day. I have a certain amount of tasks and I keep it very open. So I make sure to have that open space where, oh, if I get an idea, I can record a new video. Oh, if I want to take a break, I have the time to do that. And it's also, mm, I want to say, creating that balance is also like allowing yourself to kind of work through the shadow work of the business aspect of our lives because especially if you've ever worked for anyone and you want to have certain you have certain hours with those people but if you're starting to work for yourself we feel so liberated in a way that we begin to kind of lax on that so it's like create your own hours (laughs) if that feels good take care of yourself more often than you think you need to, Um, creating like a sacred workspace, a separate from your sacred like spiritual practice or, um, a you know, personal area. Because right now I do everything in my room. So I just make sure that I set myself up really well in the morning. Like I do everything I want to do in the morning and then I work. Um, so then I know that I'm prioritizing my own spiritual health and my growth, um, and my body, and then I get to the work, but it's definitely scheduling out and structuring out so that the feminine can kind of work within the structure. And that way I know I can actually get stuff done because all the planning and everything, it really does help (laughs) spreadsheets, planning, it helps so much and streamlining certain things, delegating, if you can get help, um, that's really helpful as well, but it's definitely doing the shadow work of your business and seeing where, okay, why am I procrastinating? Why am I not able to focus? You know, it's asking those types of questions. So how do you fit in leisure with that? Um, I, I don't create that flexibility because I can right. create my own schedule. I'm able to be like, okay, I have my weekends completely off. So sometimes I'll be able to do that where I can take my Saturdays off and my Sundays off, or I'll just, I always make sure I have a lunch every day, um, like an hour to two hours, depending on how I feel. And I'll just adjust my calendar as so online so that I know that, okay, I'm still like available if anyone needs me, (laughs) but I'm still able to kind of like go out. So for me, like my schedule is still like a 10 to five, but because I'm allowing and I've done my spiritual practice, my sacred practice, and I have this schedule to be like, okay, I'm going to start work at five, start work at 10 and then open myself up to be like, okay, let me call in the divine feminine, like be with me, help me create when I need to create and then have specific days where I need to edit, do all the website stuff. And that way I know where I can kind of tap into what energy, if that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, you just feel out which energies you're going to be working with or playing mm-hmm. with. like Yeah, because you can plan it out. You can plan it out. But I do want to say, like, when I was doing 
following more of my intuition depending on how I feel I was like oh I don't feel like recording today but I had a video that was supposed to be out you know tomorrow then it's like okay that doesn't work like that (laughs) but it's remembering like you can conjure up this energy if you take care of yourself you can conjure up this creative energy you can conjure up this more masculine like let's get it done energy um and it's like those beliefs around that around okay I can't do this because I feel this way you know yeah so Mm -hmm. let's talk about light language um what's introduce the concept to someone who doesn't know anything about it yeah so light language is this it's almost kind of like sanskrit if you've ever heard of sanskrit which is basically what yogis use for different poses like asana that's a sanskrit word Um, but basically it's this divine language, but this language, light language is a very universal language that our soul recognizes. So it may sound like different, you know, sounds and words, like a different dialect, different languages, but it's like a little off. (laughs) It may just be movement, us moving our hands in a specific way, our bodies in a specific way, that can be light language. It can look like gibberish and scribbles on a piece of paper. (laughs) That can be light language. Yeah, people do art with it. it's intuitively done, but there's patterns that keep coming up. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You'll notice the patterns. It's, it feels, you feel like you're crazy when, if you start speaking this (laughs) or writing it um, or start even moving your body in this way, at first you'll feel like you're crazy. You're like, what is this? It doesn't make any sense, but it feels good. And that's what light language is so good at doing because it allows you to almost get past the conscious mind, get into the subconscious and straight to your heart and your soul. It gets all the way back there. So there's no need to try to understand what it means. You can do light language. Um, So if someone speaks light language and they're like, oh, I'm going to bring upon joy and vitality or just, you know, these emotions, these feelings, I'm going to help you bring up unconditional love within yourself when they actually speak it or channel it through some writing or even movements it's basically just energy work and it's transmitting and sending through this energy and this this message it vibration. Be a message yeah it's a vibration that's the word vibration straight to your soul and it allows you to feel that allows you to anchor that into your body and your being and from that state after like listening to it you'll notice Um, especially if you're open to receive it, you'll notice a little bit of a change where certain things that may, that may not align to that vibration actually come up or you may just, Do you mean if you you just hear it from someone else or does this, if you do it? Both. (laughs) Definitely Right, because suddenly I've listened to a number of different YouTubers, including you, doing light language and it definitely feels good to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although once I had an experience where it's like, it was like dark light language in a dream mm. or something. And it was weird and it just felt unpleasant, like like piercing. Ooh, that's very but, interesting. Yeah. I want to say, because light language is such a universal language to where okay, if you're human, you can understand it. Um, Animals, I actually worked with someone that does light language for animals and it like kind of helps them and soothes them. So Um, light language. Souls Hmm? communicate that way, right? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Our souls communicate. Language. Yeah. So beings from other planets can, you know, understand it as well. So I feel like you could have a darker aspect of it or just even if you don't resonate with it if you listen to something and you're like oh, it's not you doing know what? anything for me it's just it's the same thing it's just it depends on who's doing it i guess yeah do you think and it depends gonna... on their agenda you yeah. know yeah do you think we're all going to be like talking in light language like after the awakening is complete I feel like it's rising. I feel like it's definitely rising. A lot of people are waking up to it 
And it's amazing to kind of see, like, I'll do it out in parks and everything. And people don't look at me like I'm crazy. Like they just kind of (laughs) accept it, but it feels good. Like when I do it, I make sure that I'm doing it from a place of unconditional love, you know? And if people aren't doing it from that place or just they're, they're doing it for a very, you know, specific reason that isn't truly aligned with the truth and the love of all beings right it can feel a little like oh, it doesn't really resonate with my soul your soul just doesn't vibrate at that level but um I do feel like this is something that we all have um right. and I know that I've heard stories of people's kids like being able to speak it and the thing is is that when we're young and I spoke it when I was young without realizing it I called it some other language <laughs> I was like this is just me speaking Mapacha, and that was like my name for it <laughs> But, um, and, and I was lucky enough not to get judged by my family for it. But a lot of the time, if kids or just teenagers or just, you know, babies or not babies, well, toddlers, you know, when they start speaking, they might start speaking this like fluent, very unknown language and parents may not be able to understand, oh, is there something wrong with them? And they could diagnose them for so many different things just because of that. And I've heard stories about that. And that's what kind of um, brings down, like that suppresses our yeah. light language, our ability to do that. And then we'll have to heal that, you know, eventually. But I feel like that's been going on a lot. So. Or even <laughs> be like religiously suppressed. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely something I think that we could all speak. I feel like we can all tap into it. And it's it's cool because it's just the way that I teach people this, it's basically the way that you express. So if you don't feel like you express it through your actual mouth and speaking through your throat, right? If you feel like this is something where, oh, I, I move my body and that feels like light language to me, then that's for you. Maybe it's just sitting in meditation and emitting this energy, right? Um, that could be for you (laughs) holding certain mudras it's it could be very simple or just writing things down a mudra a mudra is basically uh, a position in which you have your hands so if you guy on mudra is really the popular one the thumb and the index finger together but these are really they tap specific points um and it's pretty it's pretty fun to be able to see yourself when you start like tapping into your own energy and start working with it and allowing like your body to integrate it and embrace it and embody it, um, you start to kind of like move your arms and your hands in different ways. And people will call it like different mudras (laughs) that we create with our hands, which is really interesting. I've seen these sort of spiritual, it's a sort of spiritual satire thing, like where people are like doing these like a bit something a bit like that and then the, it's like they edit it so there's like there's like energy beams coming off like and then there's oh like yeah <laughs> up and like tosses it back or something yeah yes 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 a lot of people do that and what people don't realize is that we truly can do that with our energy we can truly right. move it around and transfer it to some people. And some people can even see that happening. Like when we're doing light language, they can actually see the energy in our hands because that a lot of the cool. time we see it. I said, we'll be cool. Cause we will see it. Oh yeah. I don't know if <laughs> eventually it, I can, I can <laughs> picture it, but that's not the same as just like just seeing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seeing I mean, it, if right? you can imagine, yeah. Seeing it from that that mind's eye, the third eye. So, it's so fun. <laughs> what about channeling? What's your, I mean, I know you've channeled already, um, but what's what could you tell us about your experience with it? So channeling, I actually just did a whole masterclass about channeling, but my view on it, my lens on it is just this really natural thing. So when we think of channeling, we normally think of someone bringing through like another spirit or a guide or something and us actually being able to speak as them right sometimes we can think of it that way sometimes we could think of it as receiving downloads or messages from you know galactic families or specific spirits or ascended masters and stuff like that 
But for me, I like to see channeling as a way of expressing, which is a lot what I do with like light language. I'll go outside. My favorite thing to channel, just a side note, <laughs> is to channel the trees, like being able to just sit with a tree and um, really just open my consciousness out to them and allow the tree to kind of merge with me in a sense and I'm able to channel whether it be light language or they just start moving and you can just feel the energy so I feel like channeling can be this really conscious um and aware and natural thing where we don't have to open up and be like take over my body you know it's not about that for me anyway <laughs> it's like an we're intuitive not conversation over. It really is. It definitely is. Because I can channel through, you know, starseed lineages like Arcturians, the Pleiades, right? I can channel through who is really connected with me. And what's really fun about channeling that I like to, you know, tell people is that we can all do it. You can all channel, but it doesn't mean that you have to open yourself up and, you know, necessarily be quote unquote hijacked or taken over. Like, no, it's not that at all. It's basically just you being open enough to explore different aspects of yourself because we are all God consciousness, right? So really, communicating through that so tapping like into different wisdom yeah actually that would that's that's kind of interesting like thinking of it as telepathy but um yeah it's like bringing bringing more wisdom through you can channel through other people's guides and not or necessarily memories, have right? them take over yeah you can channel your own memories the akashic records actually i feel like when you tap into that you're channeling in a sense so i don't know i just like to open up the field when it comes to channeling and be like, no, it's not like this, you know, woo woo thing so much. It's really just us being in our zone. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> we can't be up. afraid of being thought of as woo woo because it's kind of like, we're, we're so far out of the mainstream at this point. There's no point even trying not to be woo woo. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it will be kind of natural to be more accepted in time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it. I feel like it. And I think it's releasing that fear. There's so much fear around being able to channel spirits and ascended masters and all of these things. And it's like you can receive these messages from other people because people will say they channel Jesus. They'll say they channel Mary Magdalene and all of this. It's like, okay, you can listen, but you don't have to consent to it. You know, you can open yourself up to channel, but if you feel an energy that doesn't feel right, or if you start to realize that, oh, I feel a little vulnerable, you don't need to go so far. You can say, I do not consent, right? You are a sovereign, free being. Um, you have your own space and nothing can enter your space or your energy or your body without your consent. So it's like once you release that fear and realize I'm love at my core, I'm God at my core, I'm source, right? I don't need to fear this. You release that fear and we immediately just strengthen our energy because right. we realize I can't be penetrated. I can't be manipulated by specific energies like you are in control when you're channeling you are in control <laughs> do you feel though that it's important to have dealt with anxiety and fear and done enough shadow work to confidently do it because otherwise what you channel might match a fear-based or shame-based or whatever yes. frequency and that isn't that's not good Exactly. I've had that experience actually, where I was channeling and I was like deep in meditation. I was just, you know, I don't know what I was trying to channel through. I was just trying to connect with something, <laughs> honestly, and just get a little bit of wisdom. And I actually was feeling an energy in the corner of my room. And I thought this was so, it was like literally trying to speak with me, but this energy was just like this shadow. It was a fear of mine. It was like, once I actually opened my eyes and was like, okay, what is actually going on here? It was actually a fear. And it's, it's strange. This is just my experience. Like when I have fears come up and I allow myself to, um, channel and stuff like that I can actually see it as a shadow 
Like I can see it, you know, with my third eye. Sometimes I can kind of glance and see it with my own two eyes, but I can just feel the energy of this shadow of this weight. And it's normally a shadow aspect of ourselves. So a lot of the time, yeah, that's why like, especially when I teach channeling to people, like you said, you got to do that shadow work, like things will come up. And the more that you know yourself, (laughs) the easier it is, you will be able to decipher what energy is yours and what's not yours or what is, you know, um, just in shadow aspect of you um, and just like tap into that. And it's the awareness that there are, you know, there are darker energies with other agendas for themselves, but you can just have awareness of it without fearing it. Cause as soon as we fear things or fear our own fears or shadows that may start to manifest yeah. within our, you know, channel, um, within our head, that's when we give our power away. And, you know, it's about bringing your power back. And when you bring your power back to yourself, you're able to just see so much more. You're, ex- you're ex- so much more expanded <laughs> and you feel a lot stronger and more secure in who you are. Okay. What you're doing. <laughs> so do you feel like disclosure is coming soon? Elaborate elaborate on disclosure that. about like partly about like aliens for example but but it might also include mm. spiritual stuff as well just like truths that have been hidden from us yes yes i mean we're all i think i feel like we're already seeing it now like i was really surprised well not super surprised but also i was like oh this is this is interesting when they were talking about the galactic federation like someone came out talking about that he's really uh, minister or ex-minister for the uh, space or something <laughs> no else. yeah it? yeah like that. yeah yeah and that was I mean that's something that I I was surprised at the response on that you know it's like we're in this time where it's completely normal to be like oh yeah there's there's aliens that people are aware of and I feel like everyone has like these inner knowings within them and just I feel like there was so much last year that was coming up to the surface like so many truths that came up I can't even like list them all because I'm not I'm not super involved in like the news and stuff like that but I feel like we're gonna see a lot more of that probably there's just there's a lot that we don't that the collective has this inner knowing about but that our leaders just aren't sharing you know and we're seeing that come up we're seeing it like we're just done with it (laughs) we're done with putting everything under the rug (laughs) you know i i think we can at this point we can be done with the idea that when aliens finally show themselves like how about we don't take them to their lead our leaders how about Mm -hmm. we just talk to them directly right yeah because our leaders haven't exactly been trustworthy have they (laughs) (laughs) It's true. People are starting to see that, okay, hey, they don't have our best interests in mind. Like we're starting to see that it's a very consumer based, like especially the United States, it's very consumer based. Most of the planet is just based on us consuming, consuming, consuming. And we're shifting that like we're realizing that we need our communities, especially with the pandemic that's all we had. We had our families. We had who was nearby, our communities. And it's working within that and realizing that, okay, we got to take our lives in our own hands, especially with people that aren't able to get benefits from their governments and stuff like that. Um, It's just, yeah, (laughs) so, so much that um, we are starting to see. And I'm, I mean, not everyone's going to be waking up to it and realizing it. there's going to be a lot of resistance, which we see, especially with, you know, certain people, like they're resisting the change. They want it to go back to normal. <laughs> and the more that they do that, it's like, okay, you're going to be left behind. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, with the virus, I mean, like, it's not going to back up to normal, but we get to decide what that new normal is. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the authorities deciding everything for us. It's so true. It's so true. I think that can happen. I think it maybe it'll take longer than we would like, but we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, it's just that we have, we're starting to wake up, right? So we're, we're like, we just want the awakening already. So it's like, 
okay, so it's the end of 2020 and we have this solstice and we're like, it's happening. Everything's going to happen now. And of course, like, that doesn't work that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it means more people wake up. But I mean, like, when you woke up, it took a while before you really made the signs really mm-hmm. show themselves, right? So yeah. it might be at least a couple of years until we start seeing the signs of these people who woke up, like, a couple of years ago like not again mm-hmm. years. well maybe or like a couple of months ago yeah people are waking up fast too i'm surprised because i'll i'll get a lot of messages and emails and stuff like that from people that are like i've just had my spiritual awakening <laughs> and i'm surprised that they are already kind of seeing all this stuff they're seeing light language they're seeing or being exposed to so many different things and it can be really overwhelming I feel like because there's so much within the spiritual community that you can really tap into and I always have to remind people like no just follow how you're feeling right now follow what resonates with you right now you don't have to do every practice you don't have to do all the you know herbal medicine you don't have to do it all all at once like we each have our own individual journey and the journey is the most important part you know it's not about like where we're getting to and everyone was making such a huge deal like you said (laughs) out of the solstice just wanting it to be there but it's like it it's it's about us playing here with our energy like that's what we're here to do we're here to play we're here to you know follow our soul and our heart right yeah and our heart and remember what that actually means what that actually is for us so for a lot of people that are awakening now it's they're they have so much at hand (laughs) and it's like it can be super overwhelming um at first like super overwhelming and i'm seeing that a lot where people are like i'm i'm really open to this which i'm really really happy that i'm starting to see people are just open to it they're like thanks for you know spreading the good vibes like it's just the littlest things even within my family and my partner like it's just the littlest things the littlest changes that we see in people whether it be their interactions or just even a sentence that they'll say and you're like oh you're waking up like it's here you're already there you know (laughs) um just everyone's moving at their own their own pace it's and it's honoring that it's like honoring your pace and where you're at and honoring where they're at um and i'm hoping that we can continue kind of keeping that openness it's already like really important like practice or thing to do or just keep in mind like for for your journey whatever it may be like the the one thing that is important to kind of keep in mind overall sure <laughs> Um, I was being a bit more broad than that, but okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like um, a sort of compass to guide, to help some guide them. Ah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So I want to say at a certain point, it just, it just becomes a way of life. Like it's important to me. It's important to me that I show up as the best that I can with the self-love that I have. And I feel like remembering that, okay, um, for me, the biggest thing is just remember, like holding onto my heart and just remembering that, okay, I am love, like I am supported. How can I allow other people to feel that so they don't have to feel the pain that I've felt or so that, you know, people don't have to feel that pain (laughs) overall, the pain of just being human, you know, all the emotions and the thoughts and the experiences that we go through. So I feel like it's been such just a way of life that now it's like every single day, I just remember, okay, it's all love. Like I can bring the love in, bring the love in and give it out. And that's like the biggest thing that I go by every single day. (laughs) Well, that's that's wonderful. So I think we might need to bring it to an end, but we don't need to. But I like <laughs> it's a good time to do that. Mm-hmm. Whatever time is, anyway. Don't even know. <laughs> time has been flying. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to interview you again sometime. Good I would 
Absolutely love that. It's been wonderful talking to you, just everything and more. So thank you so, so, so much for having me on. It means the world to me. This is actually, you were the first one that came to me about a podcast. And then um, I had, so this is actually my second podcast because someone else like booked me really last minute and I was like, okay, let's do it. (laughs) Um, So super excited thank you so so much i'm just i have so much gratitude for you and i am so excited to share this with everyone you're doing amazing just loving it loving it loving it (laughs) okay so um and to the listener well thank you thank you for listening to all of this uh i hope you enjoyed yourself and um keep up with that inner work uh you can do it um so uh Yeah. Bye, Aria. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone.